Find it. Just waiting just, just a second so we can get wind. to you. Give me just a couple more seconds. Less than a minute. Less than a minute. What did he say? 13 or 30 seconds. Okay. So okay. Ready? Go for it. At about 4.15 this afternoon, we responded to a call for a suspicious male here at the racetrack on Saxon Boulevard in Deltona. Uh, deputies arrive on scene. Uh, one deputy arrives first. He goes into the men's room where he encounters a Hispanic male who was at the sink and it appears uh, from what is on the sink that he was, uh, there's some type of heroin and fentanyl on the sink. Uh, the deputy makes contact with him and orders him to get them down on the, his knees to handcuff him. Uh, he resists the deputy. Eventually, the deputy gets him down on one knee when the second deputy arrives on scene. Uh, as they go to pull a second hand behind his back and handcuff him, the fight is on. The second deputy that arrived on scene pulls out his taser and attempts to taser the subject. During the struggle, the suspect gains control of the taser, which causes that deputy to then react with deadly force and fire shots and kills the male inside the bathroom. We have not identified, positively identified, the person that we shot yet. Uh, the deputies have not been injured. Uh, and the first the deputy who fired is on administrative leave, which is per our policy. Uh, we are interviewing the other deputy that was there. Obviously, we're doing body camera video, store video, and we're trying to piece this together. So everything that I'm telling you now is what we know preliminarily. There's nothing concrete that you can hang your hat on. It's, it is, this is uh, evolving as I speak. Do you know While you're the not identifying the suspect? Suspect is dead. While you're not identifying the suspect, can you tell us if he had a criminal history or what you know about I, him I, at this I, point? I can't answer that yet. We, we have a tentative ID on him. We have not positively 100% identified him. I can tell you that in the bathroom, uh, there were uh, needles, I believe, and there is what we believe to be heroin and fentanyl. And the call came out that he had been acting suspicious in the store and was in the bathroom for over 90 minutes. Did that call come from an employee or did someone? I believe we believe that call came from someone inside the store. Sarah, can you tell us, um, was it the deputy that had the taser taken away from him that fired the fatal shot? Yes, ma'am. The deputy that had his taser taken fired the fatal shots. Are both deputies Sorry. on leave? No. Just, just the one that just fired. Just the deputy that used his, his firearm, which is well, her policy. Can you tell us about the deputy that's uh, on leave? How long has it been with the department and everything? Uh, that's a good question. I don't, I don't have that. I don't have that yet. Will you, know, you release his we, name? We will tomorrow, you, which is our standard procedure. 24 well, hours in. Do you have another member to anyone who engages a deputy on your floor? Yeah, I, I think this goes back to the opioid epidemic here. Clearly, you have somebody that was not, in my, in my opinion, in, from what I saw, was not in the right frame of mind and decided for whatever reason they were not going to go to jail and they were going to fight to get away. And once he gained control of that dep the deputy's taser, I mean, that's the way we're trained. When, you, when that guy gets control of that taser, he now can inca incapacitate, you know, the deputy who was wrestling with him or, or the first deputy on scene, get a hold of his firearm. I mean, it becomes a deadly force situation. But to your point, it was also near customers, near salespeople. Well, you, you're, you're right. You're in a active live business. You know, if he gets control of one of those deputies' firearms, and now he's out on the store on the loose with... You know, 14 rounds, we have a problem. And again, he's given orders by the first deputy on the scene, must tell him 15 times, sir, placing you under arrest, there's no sense in resisting, please put your hands behind your back. And and the, and the, and the victim in this case is Hispanic, is Hispanic, so they're conversing in Spanish. So not only is he give, giving commands in Spanish, he's giving commands in English. And he does get him down on the one knee, he does get one handcuff on him, when the second deputy comes in with his taser wall and they try to get that second hand behind his back and that's when all hell breaks loose inside of the bathroom. Did the suspect say anything back? It's kind of hard to tell. We're watching it. Uh, we watched the video from an iPad, so it's not on a big screen where you can slow it all down. There is a conversation in Spanish between the, the first deputy and the, the, the victim in this case. And then you can see where the fight is on. And, and eventually you watch what he does is he uses both hands and just yanks the taser from the uh, from the deputy that fires. So he yanked it while 
while he was being tased? Or the I, we're not sure if he got the taser off. The way they're struggling, the, the deputy that fires has the taser out, and you can see where the, the suspect's hands go around the taser and where he turns his body and rips the taser out. The other deputy's like around his neck struggling with him. Now he's got the taser, and the taser, you don't have to fire it to use it. You can drive stun somebody with it and basically render them paralyzed for three to five seconds, in which is plenty of time to retrieve the firearm or do whatever whatever is going to happen in, in that in that confined quarters. Sheriff, we have any number of customers were inside the racetrack or pumping gas outside at that time? I think there's a total of seven county employees. There's a total of seven people. And remember, this occurred, the only people in the bathroom are the two deputies and uh, and the suspect. So we were knowledge of drugs. He was alone in the bathroom at the time. He was drugs. alone in the bathroom. And he was in there for 90 minutes, according to the call that we got. And to your knowledge, he was in the store in general. He was buying himself. He was correct. From what we we have not downloaded the video from inside of the store to show how exactly what his movements were. But the 911 call said we have a suspicious male, and he's in the men's room. He'd been in there an hour. And he had been in there for like 90 minutes. Now, I don't know if that 90 minutes says the bathroom or the 90 minutes says the store or combined. How disheartening is it to know that someone is dying there? I, I think it, I said it earlier. It goes back to the opioid crisis, and it, it, you know, I don't know this guy's criminal record, but clearly he was a drug user who turned violent. I mean, he was when you when you see the body camera video, the first deputy does a great job. He warns him a, a thousand times. He's trying to talk him down and calm him down. And you, you, when you're watching it, you're saying we're three seconds away from them putting the other handcuff on his right arm. And it, it's over. He's locked up. He gets locked up for possession of whatever it is, and we move on. But that's not what happened. What happened is, just as they went to put that second handcuff on him, is when he now decides that he is not going to go peacefully. And you know, and once he got control of the deputy's taser, there's really not a lot you can do. And you guys are going to be releasing that body cam video? That won't get released until FDLE's investigation is completed, because that's all part of the investigation. Yes, sir. Was there any store surveillance video available? There's surveillance video outside of the bathroom. You can't surveil inside. You get, you get locked up for that. We have body camera video from inside the bathroom. What do you think the store will be open? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, medical examiner hasn't been here yet. The, uh, the scene in the bathroom really hasn't been fully processed yet. It has been processed uh, preliminarily. Did the suspect have full control of the taser and did he turn and fire? Did yeah, he do it? The, 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 they're, they're wrestling. So what you see is you see him come away with the taser. You can see the tasers in his right hand. You can see the, the original deputy who was speaking to him in Spanish. You can see him engage with him. And then you hear the shots. There's, there's two different angles of the body camera. And then you hear the shots that ring out. And here you You know, Contact with this we, we don't know. We have not positively identified him yet. So until we do, uh, you know, seems to be from the video, I would say he's in his late 20s, maybe, maybe, maybe early 30s. Thank you. Is there a message you want people to learn out of this? You know, we say it over and over and over again. If you cannot challenge law enforcement, obey the commands, and everything ends peaceably. I know that these two deputies did not come to work today to shoot and kill somebody. You know, it may be one of the officers passed a comment that if we would probably would have waited 10 more minutes to respond if we were doing something else, he probably would have been an overdose and we would have been administering Narcan to this guy. As instead of, you know, we, we open fire and we have to kill this individual because he can't control one of our weapons. You guys suspect, are you guys confirmed that it's fentanyl and heroin? That we haven't. We, we're assuming that right now based on what we've seen in our community, but all that will be determined by, by field tests. Do you guys think he was high at the time? Uh, my, my opinion, strictly my opinion, yes. Yes. Thank you. So, thank you, Thank Sheriff. you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you.